what's, what was your knowledge of the Camino? Did you, had you heard a lot about it because your father was from this area? Yes, my father was a Gallego, so I heard about the Santiago uh, since I was a boy, you know. I never was really inclined to, uh, to uh, make the journey until recently, you know, like in 2003. Uh, I set out with my grandson and an old friend, uh, but we didn't have enough time to complete the journey. I had to be back in, in uh, L.A. to begin the new season for the West Wing. So we only had about 10 or 12 days, so we did what every American would do. We rented a car and we drove it. <laughs> and we were kind of infamous along the way because we were known as the American Pellegrinos in the red uh, car. But we did manage to um, get a, a, a great feel for it, you know, and stopped at all the main places. And then occasionally uh, two of the lads would drive on and leave me to walk, and then I would drive on, leave one of them to walk. So we did manage to walk quite a bit of it, even though it was done very briefly. But the greatest miracle that occurred uh, was my uh, grandson, uh, Taylor, met his wife, Julia, along the Camino, and, uh, and they moved together here. ever since. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What was it that made you, in 2002, 2003, think, now I want to go and explore what's part of your history? Well, I'm not getting any younger, and I knew uh, the older I got, the longer it would take to actually do the journey. And I thought, um, why not now? You know, uh, I, I, I miscalculated the time. I, I should have given more time. But I, I did a great study on it. I, I began to read a lot of books on it and got as much information as I could. And I, I uh, got uh, Emilio interested. and. Uh, it's just sort of evolved, you know, and, and uh, now I'm kind of in love with it, and I, I still look forward to doing the whole thing, all the way from, uh, you know, uh, uh, Saint-Jean-Pierre-de-Port uh, Saint uh, in the Pyrenees, all the way to here in Santiago de Compostela. People have been making the pilgrimage for a thousand years. What yeah. do you think the pilgrimage means in current day, in present day? What, when you were going along the route, when you were just filming, yeah. what did you find that people were doing it for? In modern times, well, it's 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 a it's a pilgrimage inside. For everyone, it's different. You know, people make the pilgrimages in, in groups, but they really do it alone. You'll see, even the groups begin to uh, to go single file. A lot of the journey is done. It's an interior journey as well. So people are reflecting, they're they're um, uh, analyzing, they are fantasizing a lot. They're praying. Uh, they're getting in touch with a, a, a very deep part of themselves. Many people along the Camino are mourning the loss of, of, uh, of, of a loved one. Uh, uh, many people are looking for a quality within themselves that, that they're not sure exists. And many people are just curious mm -hmm. about what's in store for them at the next uh, turn or the next refugio or the next church or the next stop on the journey, you know. But for everyone, it is an it is a, as much an interior journey as it is an exterior one. Do you think it's become a less religious pilgrimage? And now it might have been that when the ancients were doing it, everybody was coming for a very religious purpose, yes, whereas now uh -huh. it's a plethora yeah. of, of yes. different. Yes, but you know, uh, religious is, is, a, hmm, is an interesting term. I, I, you know, you could separate that from from the individual, but you can't separate spirituality. I think sometimes religion, uh, religiosity tends to divide us, but spirituality really unites us. And so that's where we meet our humanity. And I think the, the pilgrimage uh, to Santiago is, a, is an effort really to unite the will of the spirit to the work of the flesh. And you're gonna be walking, you know, you're gonna be suffering a lot of uh, uh, discomfort to the body. But the soul is fed in a lot of very nurturing, unexpected ways because it's a journey of community. You, you, you can make the journey alone, but you can't do it by yourself. You, you know what I mean? It, it, is about, it is about accepting your shortcomings and joining community. Do you think if you have done it y younger, maybe in your 30s and 40s, maybe your 30s, you wouldn't quite have got that? Do you think it, it's that it's something for you that has come um, as you got older? Yes, I would say, yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have had a clue 
uh, of doing it in my 30s. I was too self-involved, you know, too egotistical and, and uh, too, too uh, unaware of the spirit, you know. Uh, and I wasn't uh, really, I wasn't a practicing Catholic then, you know. Uh, so it would have had a, a, a far different uh, meaning to me. And yet you are so much a practicing Catholic now. You, you came to hear the Pope say Mass yesterday. Yeah. What was it that brought you back into, in, into feeling that you wanted to practice well, Catholicism it, it, again? It was a, um, a realization of my humanity and the fact that despite my shortcomings, and my brokenness, that I was still loved and worthy of a life, you know, and of a happy life, which I found. And uh, you can only really experience that when you've hit bottom in a lot of ways, you know. But when you come to the realization that you're loved, in spite of your self-loathing, <laughs> in spite of all your shortcomings, when you really understand that just for being human, you're loved. That changes everything. And that, I think, is the secret to the spirituality of our humanity, is the genius of God to choose in hiding in the place we would least likely to look within ourselves. What did and then when we, when we discover that light and that love in ourselves, we begin to see it in the others. And we say, oh my, aren't we all alike? Aren't we truly a community? It's about really understanding, or not really understanding as much as accepting the reality that you are cherished in the world. For nothing you did to earn, but by being human, you are loved. That makes all the difference in the world. What did it mean for you to, to hear the Pope say Mass? Well, it, you know, it was, it, it was far more moving than I thought. He, he, it was something deeply personal, because I, I looked at him at one point and I saw the humanity of this, you know, uh, 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 deeply human man that's in this uh, very, very uh, uh, high profile, this whirlwind of activity and great uh, uh, things are expected of him. Look at me, bless me, do this, do that, you know, wear this, do that. And yet you see this very simple guy at the center of it, who's aware of his humanity. And what really struck me about him, besides his stamina, was his humility. It was like, we can take all this seriously, you know, oh, he's the Pope and all that. But there was something deeply human and humble, truly humble about him, you know, that uh, if he, I, you know, I often wondered when he was elected, did he reject it at first? Because he knew what he was in for. He was very close to his predecessor, John Paul II. So he knew what was expected of him, and yet he accepted it. But did he turn it down at one point after he was first? Uh, we will never know. No. We're not allowed to know, you know. But, uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if he turned it down and his colleagues, you know, the rest of the cardinal said, no, no, you're our man for now, you know. And he had to accept it. That wouldn't surprise me from seeing him now. Mm. You got that, that yeah, feeling I get that from, from him. His humanity, yeah. his true uh, um, humbleness, you know. What do you think the Catholic Church can do now to restore? I mean, obviously, for the vast majority of Catholics like yourself, the Church and your faith remains intact, but... Oh, yeah, you know, I think you... You have to really have an understanding of the Catholic Church as an institution and the Catholic faith as a reality in people's lives, you know. <laughs> I said something kind of funny in an interview earlier. I said, you know, if the Vatican ran out of dough and they had to close up shop tomorrow, I would still be a Catholic because I love the faith. I love the institution in so much as it, it has a presence in the world, but it's human and it's flawed and it's all male primarily, you know, so they're going to make a lot of mistakes. You accept that, you know. It goes with the territory, with any institution. Mm -hmm. But the faith is something different. The faith is what the whole church is about, you know. The Vatican is about mostly the clergy and the governance of the faith, you know, the church in the world, mm -hmm. the clergy, but the people. So you think the, it can... The, the people of the church. So you think you know. it can withstand all the 
you, you think it can withstand uh, all of the allegations and the problems that it's been faced with recently? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just a, a clearer indication of, of, its, uh, if it's, of its foibles, its failures, its humanity, you know. A lot of good will come out of this because it's been forced to look at itself honestly and say, oh, my God, we made some horrible mistakes. We have to acknowledge them first. Mm -hmm. We have to beg forgiveness. We have to do a certain penance. We have to promise it's not going to happen again. And for that, we're going to be a whole lot stronger, and it will, I promise you. But the, but, the, but the faith itself, the Catholic faith, is something deeply personal to each individual Catholic that practices it. You take it deeply uh, to your personhood, and you relate it to your everyday life. If you don't, then it's impersonal. And if it's impersonal, who cares? But no, Catholics take the faith itself deeply personal. And you're playing a priest, aren't you, in your, in yeah, your film? In Ireland, yeah, and, yeah. and it struck me that there's almost some symmetry with the, with the way, because yeah. with the way you've gone back to your Galician roots mm -hmm. and on your father's side. Mm -hmm. and, and my mother. What and now isn't it amazing that yeah, in yeah. two it's years I would be making films in both of my parents' countries, you know, and they're both uh, so similar, you know. Uh, not just in uh, Catholicism, but in family, in land, you know, ownership, how important that is to pass on land to your children and your children's children, and, and the faith, you know, as well. It's Celtic, you know, we're in Galicia, and, and I come out of this, this land, and this is my father's land, and my mother's land is Ireland, and they're both Celtic, they're similar. The villages look alike, the people act alike, you know, there's the same zest. Uh, and, and uh, love of life, you know, and... I wonder, with Emilio, whether the fact that Emilio took Estevez as his name, that he embraces the, the <laughs> Galician side yeah. and the, I mean, is, that, is, is yeah. that the case or is that too simplistic? You know, uh, he, 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 you know, what he's doing, you know, he has his own farm. He, he raises organic uh, vegetables and fruits and uh, he has a vineyard, you know, he makes his own wine. So. Uh, he's, he's become a renaissance man, you know, he's very concerned with the environment and he lives an environmentally uh, constructive life. But our roots kind of jumped the generation because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't plant a tomato. <laughs> I don't even know how to pick a tomato, you know. I, I wouldn't know the difference between a tomato and a rose, you know what I mean? Mm. And yet he, he's like a professional farmer yeah. now. He could actually make his living, you know, off the land. And, and, and he, his wine sells in all of the restaurants in the communities, you know, where we live. Uh, so he's revered as th this kind of person. Mm. And me, I wouldn't have a clue. So maybe that, that thing has jumped a generation. Mm. Because, you know, he dedicated the film The Way to, your to my father. His uh, to his grandfather, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's extraordinary. Yeah. That came, I saw it on the screen the first time. I wept. And then I thought, of course, who else would he dedicate it to, you know? That, that spirit is embodied in him, you know. He, he met my father as a child. He remembers him as a child, you know. But the spirit of my father lives within him, you know, and, and in his environment, you know, and he reflects it. It's amazing. I know it's a very painful raw time, but I wondered with your other son, Charlie, who you have an equally fantastic relationship with, it appears you've made films together. Does your faith help you deal with this time with him and the fact that you've gone through you've yeah. gone through your own troubles yeah. successfully yeah does that make it easier for you does it make it easier for you to help him no it doesn't make it any easier but it makes it that much more urgent because i have a sense of what he's feeling what he's going through mm. whenever you know private pain goes public mm. you know that it's it's an obvious cry for help and we have to be present to him and understand where he's coming from and be ready to supply the help. But the lock is on the inside for all of us. You know, we have to be willing to let, uh, let someone come in. And that's what we pray for, and that's, what we, uh, that's why we lift him up constantly, you know. He's an extraordinary guy mm -hmm. who's going through a very, very difficult addiction. And he's, he's been successful before in the past. Um, it's much more difficult now because he has so much so much more uh, uh, 
you know, um, to deal with, you know, a longer time and more money and more celebrities. So there, there are more sycophants around him, there are more voices uh, that uh, he shouldn't be listening to. You so seem to have a very strong family, though, that the way you've worked with all your, all, you know, both well, your I sons. Well, I adore them. They're the closest people to me in my life, my family, you know, my, my children, my wife, my, my grandchildren, you know, I adore them. They are my community, you know, and they have uh, given me such pleasure and joy uh, that we don't leave anyone out of that circle, anyone, they're all included. We just embrace them, all of them, some of them more intense and closer than others, but no one is left out of that circle, even former wives, you know. <laughs> Where do you feel is home? Do, are you, do you still very much feel an American first and foremost? Or when, do you, I do. when you come here, because yeah. I know you also yeah. have lived I, in Ireland. Yeah. Where do, where's no, I can't really you? separate any, I can't really separate any part of myself anywhere because then I'm fragmented, you know. So no, I'm as much a, a, an Irishman and a Spaniard at home as I am in Spain and in Ireland. I'm the same, you know, just as, you know, I'm all of the other things uh, without, without being separate. I, I'm not a, an actor alone today when I'm acting. I'm still husband, father, activist, Catholic, brother, son, grandfather, all those things, you know. So I don't separate any part of myself or any part of my heritage. I'm, I'm always the same. Uh, person, you know, no matter what place I find myself in, you know, I, I, I relish, I, I adore both sides. I'm equally Irish and Spanish and American, you know, in the middle. And on the streets, everyone looks at you as a president, do they? Do they come up all the time and say you're <laughs> well, a great president? Uh, some of them, well, I, I was known affectionately as the acting president of the United States. And since the series ended, I'm known affectionately as the former acting president of the United States. So I, it, it, it's great fun, you know. And, and I, I, I'm grateful that people embraced the series, and particularly at a difficult time in our history. You know, we had some lunacy going on in that Bush administration, particularly with the war in Iraq. And we were opposed to all that. We, we, we were giving a, a different possibility. So we were like parallel universes. And a lot of people were looking at us and encouraged by the possibility of what a president could be mm. and what they could achieve, you know, and how they could, could, could give a better image of America to the world, you know. I'm sure my time is nearly up. So may I just ask you, did you have any epiphany when you were on the Santiago pilgrimage route, the Camino. <laughs> well, well I, you know, I've yet to really do the pilgrimage. That I still look forward to, and I, I, I long to do it. And maybe next year. I will make the entire journey from, from, uh, from uh, saint jean pied de port yeah. in the Pyrenees all the way to where we are now. Uh, that would be a dream, to do that, and have the time to do it, and reflect on it. Um, so uh, if that's yet to do. I, I, I still have some more time left and a lot more energy, so I, I hope, please God, I'll get a chance to do it someday. I feel I've done it inside yeah. in a lot of ways with Emilio and Taylor. Yeah. We've made this journey together and we filmed it. Yeah. And uh, we've done some extraordinary uh, work yeah. and people are responding to it. And the people that responded to it the best are those that go on that journey inside as they watch it. They, they, they share a lot of what we are yeah. experiencing they share it uh, emotionally, spiritually, and they, they, they relate to it in deeply personal ways. Mm -hmm. And you know, if something is not personal, it's impersonal. If it's impersonal, no one cares. But the film is being embraced by a very large number of people. And so this is so encouraging and so satisfying to us. So okay. the best thing I can say is, buen camino. <laughs>